Hey guys, welcome back. In the next five minutes, you're going to learn how to master 3D design with text in Adobe Illustrator. And we're not talking about slapdash, messy around the edges kind of design. We're talking about something that is both polished and professional. And it's going to cover everything you need to know so that you can then integrate high quality 3D into your next creative project. So hopefully that sounds good. I think it does. Let's jump into Illustrator and get started. Right here, so first of all, let's create a new document. My artboard size is 1920 by 1080. And make sure you're in RGB color mode so we get those nice vibrant colors. Next, you can see I've got the 3D panel docked here. If you don't see yours, just go up to Window and then down to 3D and Materials. And you can dock this over on the right hand side. Next, I'm going to select the Type tool, click anywhere and type some text. I can then select this with the main selection tool and just hold Shift and scale this up. And you can see I've done this totally the wrong way around. That should be a 3 and a capital D. Not a good start, is it, Dan? But I'm feeling hopeful. Anyway, let's pick a font for this text. I'm going to go with SF Pro Display Bold. And sometimes with numbers and letters, it's worth just reducing the tracking. That's the spacing between the characters. So let's bring the 3 and D closer together. And you can select a color from the swatches panel or double click the color picker. So I'm going to go with the color FF7C3A. This refers to a specific orange and I can then add this as a global swatch. And I'm then going to repeat this process twice more. So I have two more swatches that are gradually getting further towards red. So I have an orange, a ready orange and a ready ready orange. Mm, yes, someone definitely paid attention in color theory class. So I'm going to select the lightest orange. You may have your lighter color and then I'm going to align the text centrally and also centrally on the artboard. And you can see it's not snapped to the center. So let's just bring that down a pinch. There we go. Okay, this is where the fun starts. Now let's whip out the 3D panel and select extrude. Now we can control the depth of the extrusion here. I'm going to go with something like 150 pixels. And if you'd like to experiment with the rotation, you can click and drag on this central point to freely rotate it around. Or you've got the drop down here with some presets. So we can try isometric left, isometric top. And if you want isometric top, but going the other way, just add a minus value to the Y and Z axes. And there you go. Nifty trick. You can also play around with perspective, but we're going to leave this at zero for full isometricity. Not a word, Dan. You can turn on ray tracing as well. Check, remember and apply to all and then render this. And as you can see, it looks beautiful, but we're not done yet. There's much more we can do. You can pick a material of your choice. I'm going to use the default here and you can play around with the roughness and the metallic. Think of the roughness as how shiny or reflective the surface is and the metallic, well, how metal like it is. Not much else here. So let's hop over to lighting. So we've got a few different presets here that we can play around with. I'm going to go back to standard and start there. I like that one the most. Now, first of all, I'm going to crank up the intensity so we have more light. And as you can see, that does look quite awful. But if I adjust the rotation, you can see how much of a difference that makes. And this is one of those settings that you really don't want to get wrong. So for this design, I settled on a value of minus three. And similarly, we can play around with the height of the light source but this is actually easier to see if we turn on shadows. And as you can see, if I increase the height of the light source, the shadow becomes shorter, just like in real life. Now you can see there is a bounding box here as well. And if I go to the bottom, typically you can increase this, but as you'll see here, 400% is the maximum, but that's fine. We don't need a shadow that long anyway. So I'm going to set the height value to 65 degrees. There we go, teeny tiny shadow. Next, we're going to look at softness. So this is going to be the softness of the light. This will change how your material looks, but also the lower the value, the harder your shadow will be, the further you bring it up, the softer your shadow. So I'm going to go with 70%. Now, if your text bugs out like this and goes back to 2D, just turn off ray tracing and turn it back on. Now we've also got ambient light. Think of this as an external light source that is just wrapped around your entire 3D object. This is a good one if you'd like to reduce shadows and just brighten everything up overall. And I think 80% is good for this one. Now we will use the shadow later, but for now, let's turn it off and go back to object. I'm actually going to turn on bevel, and then from the drop down, I'm going to select round. And you've got two values here, width and height. And these are pretty important. And I try to keep them both around a similar value. This just rounds off the corners ever so slightly and creates that nice highlight around the edges. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's layer it up. So I'm going to move this up, go to edit, select copy, and then go back up to edit. And this time select paste in back. This will paste it behind and let's turn off ray tracing so my computer doesn't melt. Now for this copy, I'm going to select my middle color and then use the arrow keys to nudge this down. Now I don't want to go too far. So let's take care to line everything up. Now these are actually looking a bit tall. So I'm going to go back to the 3D panel and change the depth on both to 100 pixels. Now if selecting one of these is a bit fiddly. You can press command or control Y to go into outline mode. And then you can see Illustrator Smart Guides shows me which one I'm going to select. I can then come 
come out of outline mode and make any changes. And this trick, just trust me, it will uh, it will help preserve your sanity. Okay, for this second one, I'm actually going to turn off the bevel and then use keyboard shortcuts to duplicate this again and move it down. I can then select my third color. As you'll remember, that's my ready, ready orange. And now it's all layered up. Let's turn on ray tracing and see how it looks. Nice. Now with the bottom one still selected, we can go to lighting and then scroll down. I'm going to tweak a few of the values here and then I'm going to turn the shadows back on. Ooh, nice. And I think it's fair to say that's turned out rather well. So uh, yeah, good job, Dan. Oh, thanks, mate. And there we go, that's a wrap. So hopefully you enjoyed this fun foray into 3D design. If you like more 3D and Illustrator, I've got a video I think you'll like here, or you can take your chances with YouTube over here. But as always, you've been absolutely fantastic. Take care, and I'll see you next time.